warm welcome to Art House. I'm Melinda Kinlami. Coming up on today's episode. The true human feelings and deep emotions is what this artist is fixated on as he scratches his surfaces to talk about mental health. Then we see the beauty of landscapes in this exhibition by two artists at the My Dream Gallery in Lagos. Sometimes we forget the lush scenery around us, especially when trouble comes. But all in all, let's appreciate the gift of life and nature. Fearless by Monday in Eojo is our wordsmith for this week. I wanted to write about it. But then, ideas took a long seat, because I romanced fame to the detriment of the flame that brings unswervingly art to my wordless heart. What would I have done? Tell me, what would I have done? I have been writing for years in comfort and nightmares, sparingly taking over sanity, with lie of a future glitchy, fearless energy, that's all I need to like a rider ride this bull repeatedly until words give a bid to this pauper that wants to pull. Face those fears and become fearless like Monday, our wordsmith for this week. Thank you so much for sending that in and I see many others like him as well and we'll definitely take them on other episodes of the program. Now to our first feature by two landscape painters showing us their recent works at the My Dream Gallery in Lagos. Landscapes and Beyond is a recent salon of paintings by two contemporary artists, Joseph Ayelero and Oluwa Femi Otoiki at the My Dream Gallery. This um, plague has been with us for a while. We thought it would be over in three months, one year down the line. We found ourselves deeper in it. So what positive ways, what positive th things can come out of this, of this negative, negativity all around us? And so this exhibition, for instance, is an exhibition of landscapes. People haven't been able to go to their hometowns or to their villages for fear of different things, there are the insecurity issues, there are financial, there's financial challenges, and um, then the, the plague. And so this exhibition has been able to bring their hometowns, their villages back to them in the city. Why is it uh, landscapes? You see that uh, uh, in our contemporary uh, setting, you can see that uh, our landscapes, they are very different from the uh, Oyimbo zone, which is the white man. So we, we, we want to showcase uh, the landscape we have here in Africa, especially in the West African year, Nigerian precisely, Southwest Nigeria. So we want to showcase to let the world know that our own landscape here is, is quite different from the one we can see in the, and, and in the old world. It's all about um, landscape that's, um, you know, documenting different uh, landscape all over the country. Beyond in the sense that um, even in the landscapes, there are lots of other things that you see. You see the mood, you see um, the people at times, and you see, you know, varieties of things that you, you know, make you wonder, you know, the kind of landscapes that we we'll have in the country. Beautiful landscape from the north to the west to the east. So this exhibition is about documenting those wonderful landscapes you know, for the future generations to, to see. As the title suggests, nature's beauty is once again brought to the fore by these two painters who capture these scenery in their works of art.
one of the artists, Joseph Ayelero, gets inspired by peace and his environment. I normally use a vibrant colors in my uh, paintings. You see, from it depends on the mood, then the, the time of the day. That's, and uh, most especially, I normally capture the morning setting and the evening. Why? Because in this our landscape, I mean, in, in our area here, you see that uh, the days are very bright, most especially when it is in the morning, and uh, you see the, the brightness of the day, which you see, especially in, in nature, it reflects the mood, then the atmosphere which we have here, which is at times it, it brightens uh, people's life in their uh, daily activities. So I normally capture because at times I can, the, the, the color may be muddy, but I like to use uh, vibrant colors. It's depicted in its different skylines like morning glow, morning gray, glow on the mound, sweeping sky, and other images. With this exhibition, the life still goes on, and we must be positive and move on, and adapt to the world we find ourselves in, and not sink into depression, but find ways of, you know, ways of even growing and developing. You know, even in the midst of the pandemic, we've developed relationships. While Oluwafemi Otoki, who is the other exhibiting artist, is focused on the environment and its colors, which he documents on his canvas. The style is realism, even though um, I try to take it a little bit further. Some will say it's photographic painting, but when you look at the work, it goes beyond photography. In the sense that when I paint, I try to impose myself. I don't just copy directly from photograph or directly from it. I impose. At times I change the mood. You know, I impose myself, change the mood, change the colors to suit what I want not what the picture is saying. Okay, what inspired me, you know, I would say God. Why? In the sense that he is the omnipotent, the omnipresent, the omniscient. God is all in all. And you will find out that God created the world. And all the things that we document were created by God. So the Bible says that we should be like our father. So in a way, I want to be like my father. He is a creator. In fact, he is the best of them all. There is no one on earth who can create like him. So I'm only trying to be like him. He inspires me to also want to create beautiful works. You know, when he made the earth, he looked at everything and said, all that he has done is beautiful. So I also want to look at how I can, you know, replicate that in my paintings. Through over 30 works of art, the artists reveal that nature is truly wonderful, alive and inspiring. I love the vibrant greens, the blue and yellow skies, and creation is indeed art itself. It reminds me of the lovelies you send in every week. Let's start off with Kilani Oladimeji's acrylic on canvas work called Teni Niteni. Then Ekan Nkanga has this oil on canvas work which he calls Village.
Elegance is a wood carving piece done by this artist. Then an acrylic on jeans work called Stronger Than Corona is done by Anchor's Art. Nourished is a work by Femi done with charcoal pencil on paper. Then stop domestic violence is what Osama is saying with this oil on acrylic work. Then this digital watercolor piece done by Adebayo Adetoro is called Innovative. Brokenness, the Motherhood series, is an acrylic on textured canvas work done by Tony Owiri. Then Onuha Columbus has this oil on canvas piece which he calls My Beauty. Then this final piece done by Chijoke is a tribute to the first female and first African Director General of the World Trade Organization. He calls her an inspiration with this piece done with pen on paper. And those are the works of art you sent in this week. We appreciate you for sending them in and encourage you to keep them coming. When Art House returns, more online works, but moving pictures this time around, then we spotlight a young artist from our social media platform who is doing something new. Join us again for details. If the artist has outer and inner eyes for nature, nature rewards him with inspiration. The state of everyone's mind is Toju Clark's focus in most of his works of art, whether it's digital painting or his new technique, which he calls Es Graffito. Human representations and emotions are the focus of most of contemporary artist Toju Clark's images, which tries to unmask the true human feelings. My art centralizes on characters. Um, I use characters of people I meet and some online. So I take their facial expressions and then I represent it in my own style. Now for my digital art, um, they're still the same thing, but the only thing about my digital is that it has its own style, it has this coily style, and it is unique to me alone. So what I do is, I represent the characters in my own style, and then I talk about how it affects me personally. 
So I infuse that into my drawing. And then when you see it, you'll be able to connect with it. This graffiti artist and graphic designer utilizes technology to create his digital works, while his other technique involves a lot of scratching on the canvas, which he explains. It starts from the preparation stage where I, create, I prepare the canvas, I prime the canvas, and then after priming, there's a paint I use. Um, it's a water, um, water soluble paint. And then I prime the canvas to that one, and that's the black paint you can see. So after priming that, I wait for it to dry. It takes a couple of weeks, like two weeks for it to dry. Then after that, I move to the ideation stage where I think about what I want to do. I write it down, I do my sketch, I make, do some research, and then I start working on the canvas. Now, the process of working on the canvas could take two to like two to three weeks or two to one week. And I have to work on like so most times, I work simultaneously on two to three canvas at the same time. And sometimes I just work on just one canvas. His gravito technique has recently evolved as it relates his subject with mathematical signs and formulas, which has given meaning to his works of art. There'll be a time when you have it, um, a conversation with somebody, and as long as the person is smiling, the conversation keeps on going. And what does that have to you? It makes you understand that the person is actually in line with what you're saying, and it keeps you going. And that's like a positive sign to want to you know, continue the conversation. And that's why you have this one. But the most important thing, the main reason why I even created this was because of the infusion between smiling and peace itself. Now, um, there are times when you feel like you're not at peace and then you start a conversation with somebody. The moment the person makes you smile, you feel settled and then you're calm. And that's why you have the positive sign. Right? Now, for the division sign, the first piece is called, is titled, um, Crooked Spout. The one with the guy smiling, started crooked smile. And then you have the division sign over it. Now, the meaning of crooked means, um, crooked means not straight. It is called. And that's why you have the division sign there. And then for the split thoughts, it's, you can see like there are different faces. The same person were in different characters, in different movements, and then split it. And that's when you as a person, your thoughts are like divided. I and mean, that's why you have the division signed it. People fascinate this young creative who tells us more about his inspiration. During the lockdown, it was really a shock because I'd never gone through that in my life. And but what just helped me was because I had materials on ground. And during that period, I was able to even create more than I could. And as an artist, um, you, you need time to actually work on things. You need a very serene environment. And during that period, a lot of people were indoor. You hardly find people coming outside or, or noise and at the same time. So I was indoor and I was able to create a whole lot of works during that period. And I was able to like use that period for a whole lot of productive, productive works. I created, I mean, the biggest piece I'd actually made. That was six by four feet. And I made three during that period. So yeah, and this is also a fruit of that period. So. Even the color he uses is deliberate as a focus on the inner feelings and expressions which he intends to reveal to encourage people to be more sensitive to other people's emotions, especially now when the world is grappling with different challenges. That should encourage young creatives to keep at it because you never know when you get your day in the sun. But we have more creatives like him on our online platform. And after that, we'll show you what to expect on the next episode of Art House.
coming up on the next episode. The National Museum hands over some artifacts to the original owners. Then in another part of the commercial city, we enjoy this group exhibition at Artpedia Gallery. If you look at the title of the exhibition, The Persistence of Time, we are trying to connote the influence of time in creativity. That and more in a moment. Your art house experience doesn't have to end when the show is not on television. Interact with us on our various social media platforms. See any edition of Art House on our website or YouTube page. Join our very interactive Facebook page by joining the group on Art House on Channels. We're everywhere. I enjoyed our ride through the wonderful world of the arts, and I'm sure you did too. Hit me up on any of our social media platforms where you can see this and other episodes of the program, and you can send me messages as well. I'm Melinda Akinlami, encouraging you to stay safe and keep being creative.